All right, so welcome everyone. Excited to be here today. I'm gonna to be your, your host and uh, speaker for tonight or today or today afternoon or good morning or whatever time of day or part of the country you're in. My name is Phyllis. I am PSC 100X on the platform. And it's always an honor and privilege to be here. I'm excited to be able to bring some good information to you today. We're gonna to start out by just going through some announcements that we have that are extremely important, especially um, if you're looking at doing the VPAD. So today will be your last day to pick up an additional allocation in the VPAD private sale. Um, after it closes, it will not open again. So um, we are ready to move on to our next chapter and begin preparing for the launch. So the details are um, at um, noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern time, which is pretty, pretty much over, the private sale opens to everyone who has already participated in the private sale. So that right now the private sale is open to everyone who has participated. It's also open to anyone who qualified to participate before but hadn't set in their BNB yet. It will close the moment we hit the hard cap and guys, we're getting close. We could, it, you know, which could happen in seconds, minutes, or even hours. So we really can't, we don't have a specific time on that. Or if it doesn't hit the hard cap, it will close at the end of the day um, today at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So uh, search Google for your time, to, you know, for your time zones, guys, just to make sure that you're getting in at the right time. If you previously qualified for the allocations but didn't send in the maximum you were allowed, you can send in the remaining amount plus any additional amounts that pertain to you, you know, in uh, what we described below. So if you're in tier one, you can send in an additional one BNB. If you're in tier two, you can send in two BNB. Tier three, three BNB, tier four, four BNB. If you're a diamond one, you can send an additional five BNB. If you're a diamond two, you can send an additional six BNB. And if you're in diamond three, you can actually um, turn in another seven BNB. And remember, you know, this is going to end tonight at 11.59 Pacific time. So, you know, please don't wait. I do would hate to have someone, you know, not have an opportunity to partake and probably, not even probably for me, it is the actual, um, one of the, the best launch that I know I've ever been a part of. And I was originally, the better platform was the, the best launch that I ever was a part of. So I'm excited to share with you that we have um, a great opportunity coming before us. So welcome today. Welcome to the daily session, everyone. Welcome to the daily discussion and the DAP overview. And I'm so glad and thankful to be your host as I am every time I'm here. I always learn something, um, you know, from you. And you may think that you're learning from me, but I must tell you that uh, learning, learning from me is also a great thing, but I also learn a lot from you as well. So like I said, my name is PSC 100X. I live in the Pennsylvania area. So today we're going to cover how to best utilize the veteran platform. And I'm also going to cover a little bit about the tokenomics to the basics of the tokenomics. So this call will definitely be interact interactive. So please make sure that you join in. You know, I love to hear from you when you when you communicate within the chat or else on or and or on the call, it really does lend a lot of excitement to the speaker, which is me, and really helps me do even a better job, um, you know, for you. So, you know, raise your hand if you have a question or drop a comment if you have a, a comment and you can't, you're not in the place to speak. You know, so whether you're a veteran in this community or whether you are brand new today, I'm going to cover two things for both groups. Um, so, guys, I can tell you right now, this is the, the best platform that I've ever seen, the best research tool in the crypto space. And um, I can tell you right now, it'll help you find the next 2x, 5x, 10x, and beyond. And I know it's helped me find beyond. I was actually involved in quite a few 10xers or more. So if you're brand new and you don't have a clue what better is about, that's okay. 
I didn't either, but don't worry about that. You can go ahead and visit the vetter.ai to learn what we are doing and why we are just super, super excited about you know, what we have here. Guys, I can tell you now it's pretty exciting times. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just uh, close out this here and I'm gonna get on the vetter platform and um, in just a second, but I do wanna spend some time uh, right here, because I did come up with I did come up with a few things that I wanted to discuss with you guys today, and I know that I think tokenomics we talked about before at a little bit, but I do want to get into um, more of the tokenomics a little bit deeper, and you know I, I definitely don't want to confuse anyone, so I'm going to do my best to kind of basically keep it simple. Um, I'll do my best to answer questions, but basically what I'm going to share with you is just a couple slides just to kind of get the whistle wet, just to um, help you understand a little bit about what it's what it what are tokenomics. So first of all, tokenomics is basically anything that impacts the tokens value. I mean, that's really what it is in a nutshell. And it could be several things. It could be a seed phrase, a seed sale. It could be a strategic um, or slash a pre-sale, depends what you call it. Or it can be you know, a public sale round as well. So they all affect the tokenomics. So basically, you know, they all can actually play a part in the tokenomics. Now let's talk a little bit about micro um, uh, market cap because I find that people get really confused on it. And I think it's a better way to compare tokens instead of focusing on the raw price. For example, let me give you an example. And, and this is an old example, but it's a, but it actually, it's probably pretty close to being still um, a, a true example. Cardano, you know, which at the time when I looked at Cardano was about, you know, $2 or so, and it had a $65 billion market cap, you know, and then at the same time, I looked at, I looked at Lisk, and that had a $2 per, you know, per coin as well, but they had a $300 million market cap. That's a huge difference, right? That's why market cap is a better indicator, I think, of token evaluation, and market cap also gives us a sense of how easy it is really to manipulate a token price, even in either direction. You know, the lower the market cap, the easier it is to manipulate. The higher the market cap, the harder it is to manipulate. So the market cap, in a nutshell, is a price of the tokens, um, you know, the price of the token, whatever that token is, the amount of the token on the market. So like if the token is a dollar and there are 10 tokens on the market, then it's simple math, the market, the market cap will be $10. So that's an easy way to actually describe it to you. What is a max supply? Uh, these are things, guys, in tokenomics that I actually look at before I make a decision on what I'm actually going to participate in. Now, the max supply, sometimes tokens don't have their full supply at launch. Okay, why? Because they'll have it locked up for some reasons. Maybe it'll be in the vesting purposes, or maybe they'll have um, some, you know, if they have it in vesting purpose, it, per, purposes, then the reason why they do that is because they don't want to have early investors, you know, dump on top of the community that purchased the token. So that's, you know, um, you know, max supply is sometimes you know, basically it's that, or maybe, you know, they'll keep some for staking rewards, kind of like with VPAD, you know, it's good, we're going to have some staking. So instead of releasing it, you know, immediately, they're going to be releasing it over time. So that's basically, you know, what else can affect, um, you know, what tokenomics is. This gives you an idea of how many more need to be absorbed by the market in the future. So keep in mind, some projects don't have a market cap have a cap on future inflation. You know, in that case, they do not have a maximum supply. And there are some out there that, that have that. Let me move on to the next slide. There we go. So continuing on with some tokenomics, another thing about is tokenomic is distribution. You know, how are those tokens split up? And what does that mean? What is each of that chunk of the pie? And this is where you'll usually see a pie chart, you know, in the white paper, which will describe to you, 
um, you know, you know what's going where. So if a, if a small number of insiders hold a lot of tokens, the price is a much higher risk of manipulation, right? Like sudden dumps, you know, or pumps, because for the obvious reasons, if they're holding a, a large amount, you know, and if they're not vested, you know, that can actually cause a higher risk, you know, for anyone and can actually, you know, dump you know, the, the, the token. So private sale prices, that are also a part of the tokenomics that usually will do multiple rounds and this will help you gauge your you know your willingness to sell as well so you can calculate at any price level by calculating where they are in profit so for instance if you look at a chart right now that maybe launched last week or launched yesterday and you wanted to see where the private sale holders are you know and what the selling you know what's been going on with the selling it's easy to do you just go to the chart you find the private sale price right and then you can see you know where they are in profit you know let's say that we are we're in a bear market and all you know all our bags are in the negative but the private investors guys are still in massive profit because they got in at such a low low price and that means that the selling pressure you know may not be over for that particular project you know anytime soon until most of them wind up selling you know to lock in their profits so are you in a great place you know with vpad I know it's not going to be called VPAD, but it will be called something, you know, it's going to be a launch pad. So those of you who are, who are in the private sale, by reading what I just said and what I just you know, brought to you, do you feel like you are in a great position? Because you, you know what, you absolutely are. So let me go ahead and move on. There's also other things to consider, you know, when you're talking about tokenomics, okay? An unlock schedule. Some projects will lock up some of their tokens and release them over time, right? Now the unlock schedule specifies what percentage is gonna be released to who and to what and by what intervals. Now, that's a good sign for you, okay? That's kind of like a sign. So let's look at that. You know, a vetting schedule, instead of letting the investors, uh, a vesting schedule, I meant, instead of letting the investors um, invest a hundred percent of the tokens immediately, you know, they may get into, get it in increments of like 25%, you know, maybe 25 cent in a year, maybe in 25 cents in another 25% another year and et cetera. It's good to know that the schedule of that, so you can expect an increase pretty much in the circulating supply at that time that may cause the price to dump or maybe serve as some resistance. And sorry for all the typos guys. I was uh, rushing through this. I really wanted to get this out to you, but I I will clean it up and make sure that um, uh, you know, they're fixed for you too. But I hope that you're understanding pretty much, you know, the content of this um, more than anything. So, so the vesting schedule indeed is, um, and, and it's important instead of letting, you know, because you can actually, it's good to know when that schedule is going to actually happen. You, you know, if you're in that and you want to know when that first 25% is going to be paid out, so you can expect, you know, what's going to happen is there going to be an increased supply. You, you know, you'll, you will absolutely, you know, know that. So let's talk about another part of tokenomics, and that's the token utility. Now, typically, there's roughly about six different token utilities typically, you know, and I'm sure there'll be more, you know, as we progress, you know, in this market um, over time. So the first one is pretty much a token that has a payment utility. You know, that can be used for goods and services. You can pay, you know, with your crypto to, you know, buy, you know, things of certain um, websites or whatever, or certain payment systems that can be used for any goods or services. That's that's part of a utility. Transaction fees, you know, um, you care to charge tokens to perform something on the network. So for instance, you know, if you're, if you want to charge tokens to something specifically, you know, on the network, for instance, like a transaction fee, um, if you are going to vote, you know, like on our on our actual um, a platform itself um, to access services. There's a lot of services out there, including better platform, you know, where it has a utility that you can access 
or services by the token. So discounts or cashbacks, usually with an exchange, if a user hold their tokens, okay, you will have, you know, cashback, like for instance, there's some out there, I don't know, let me just give you a, like, um, uh, what is it? Um, my goodness, uh, the, uh, where I buy all my tokens, oh my gosh, that's crazy. It's um, crypto.com, they have their own token, right? And they also have their own credit card. So when you use, you know, that, you know, you can get cash back, you know, staking using their tokens for staking. And this helps increase the network security, right? Because it's, it's gonna, it keeps on rewarding and it actually, you know, you wanna actually hold on to those tokens because you wanna get rewarded, you know, in more tokens, right? And then there's the governance. And this is where the token holders, you know, will vote on various proposals. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not really, um, I really can't even give you an example. I'm sure there's many out there. The more tokens you hold, it pretty much, you know, holds, you hold more weight, you know, in what your, I guess, what your votes are. And that's kind of, so that's basically, you know, what most of the token utilities, you know, basically the tokenomics, that's basically, you know, the description of, um, of that. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually, um, I want it to, see what time it is, first of all, because I wanted to also just get into a couple other things. Um, and just give me a second so I can get through here. I started doing some terminology on Saturday's call. And the reason for it is because I knew that people would have questions and I did go over this on Saturday. I just went over market cap, so I really don't need to go over that again, but I wanna go over a few more and I'm gonna to try to bring in a few every day, especially for those who are new, right? Because I remember scratching my head thinking, what the heck does all that even mean? You know, and I'm a pretty educated person, but wow, I was totally clueless. So liquidity. That was a that was a that was one which I kind of understood, but in order for a crypto to be traded on a decentralized exchange, you know, like Pancake Swap, you know, there must be liquidity, you know, there for the trade to be made. If there's no liquidity, the trade can't be made. So if someone wants to exchange like BNB for say another token, you know, whether it's Vetter or whether it's VPAD, there needs to be enough of that token for that trade to be made, right? And that is referred to as the word liquidity. So pretty much, if you need to take a, a screenshot, go ahead and um, go ahead and take one. These, con these phrases have really helped me. These, these words or the lingo really helped me throughout my crypto adventure. Liqu liquidity lock, we hear that a lot, right? We ask that question a lot when we're actually doing vetting out there on particular telegram groups and we're speaking to developers. How much the cryptocurrency is worth by taking the total amount of tokens or coins and multiplying that by the current market price. So market cap is often, often referenced with its total market cap versus its circulating supply too. So, you know, liquidity lock is how, how long are they going to actually lock up, you know, their liquidity for or how much you know what's what's going to be the liquidity lock and that's a question you know that you want to actually ask what is a micro cap or micro currency i call it micro cap that's a new cryptocurrency with a low market cap that's one that's already launched okay but it still may be considered a good project now we don't have them on the vetter platform yet okay but i want you to know what it is so when you hear people talk about that, you know what it is, okay? There, um, you know, there may be it, it, some microcurrencies or microcaps may be considered by some, you know, to even be a higher market cap if it's, you know, even if it's new to the market because it's likely very volatile. volatile. So there are some microcaps out there that I like to get into because I can see their track record. But again, I'm not suggesting that. I'm just giving you some, again, just some basic terminology. What's a mid cap? A mid cap is a cryptocurrency that is usually more stable with a higher market cap than a micro cap or a microcurrency, but smaller than a large cap. So 
I'm not going to get into large caps, but I will get into rug pulls and I'm going to do a probably a session on this somewhere down the line. But if a creator releases a cryptocurrency to the market and people buy it, and then the creator dumps the tokens on the market or empties out the liquidity, making it impossible to sell that token, that is considered a rug pull, guys. And there's also things out there called soft rug pulls, and you'll see that because you'll see that gradually over time, you'll start seeing some sell-offs of the token, okay? But it's not being sold off by um, the investors. It's being sold, sold off by the creators. And you can tell that by looking at, you know, the wallets, if they're, uh, if they're you know, available to you and they should be. And what does TA mean? Technical analysis. Basically, it's you're using past behavior. So you're using the future. You're, you're looking at future outcomes for a project. So for instance, if you're looking at whatever, whatever project it is, okay, if it's um, Bitcoin or whether it's uh, Ethereum or whether it's Vetter, okay, what happens is a technical analysis person who knows how to read charts. And in fact, we're going to have that as a um, as a service to you, you know, in the near future for our Vetter platform. Pretty awesome, right? So that's going to be able to give you past behavior because it's going to be able to actually help predict possible outcomes, you know, in that you know, in the market on that particular, um, that particular cryptocurrency. So I'm not going to go into my next part because I want to keep you suspenseful, but um, there's a lot more lingo out there that we can get into, but we also have, I have other things that I want to get into at a later date and be able to share that information, you know, with you too. So what I want to do is I do want to move over into our incredible platform, but I, um, I want to just make sure there's uh, nothing going on out here that I need to be aware of. All right, good. So um, let me just go ahead and and let's talk about a few projects. And one project, actually, let me just uh, show a full screen here. On our Vetter platform, and those of you who are brand new, I will go through this with you, OK? Uh, in fact, let me go through that now. Um, if you can, if if you're brand brand new, can you let me know that in the in the um, in the actual um, you know in the in the chat box? Let me know if you're brand new. The reason why I ask is because I want to make sure that um, there are certain specific things you know I will cover. Um, if you're brand new and there's some things that I may kind of just move or move over if um, if you're not brand new. So let me just um, look at this. It's a little bit difficult, guys, because the chat box is um, not really conducive for me. OK, well, good. So you're brand new. That's awesome. Well, welcome. I'm so glad to have some new people on. The, so it's. Uh, Josia, I think, David B, Brian Hill. Wow, awesome, awesome guys. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're still learning. And I hope that, you know, I'm going to bring you lots of lots more value today. So if you found this already valuable, let me know that. Send me a quick message. Um, let me know that, you know, what I covered so far was definitely something valuable to you. If it was over your head, guys, don't worry. Okay, we're going to do it over and over again. And what's going to happen is you're going to know and you're going to hear more and more about the terminology. You're going to hear more and more about the tokenomics. And what's going to happen is you will eventually start catching this. And then what's going to happen, like I did, the light bulb went off. I was like, wow, is that what they meant by tokenomics? Is that what they meant by market cap? Guys, I did not know, and it was very, very Greek to me, but I knew in my heart that this was a space that I wanted to actually, you know, get into because I knew I had to learn. And Deborah, thanks for that. She said she's been in here a long time and still good to hear what these terms mean versus learning by osmosis. <laughs> that, boy, that is the truth because that's exactly what happened to me. And I'm sure, Deborah, maybe we got involved in the same time. But, but man, that's exactly how I felt. I felt like, 
you know, wow, can somebody just, you know, connect your brain to my brain and start emptying some of that so I'll understand it. So yeah, I wish we had some of this when I was actually getting started. So thank you for that. And thanks for recognizing that. So let's move into the DAP itself. And because everybody, a lot of people are brand new, I'm going to spend some time going through what the DAP is and what it does and what everything, you know, kind of give you an understanding of what it's for. Um, so let me just share, share with you this. This is basically your dashboard, okay? It's basically what you, when you open your Vetter app, this is what you see. And this basically gives you where you are you know, in your own ranking, okay? If you're at a ranking, it's you're gonna be able to tell what your ranking is here. And it's gonna tell you how far you have to go to get to your next ranking. For instance, right now, um, I haven't really been scouting a whole lot because I've been busy um, doing things like this, but I'm starting to get really back into the swing of things because I really miss it. And um, so I, you know, recently, you know, got into the rank of um, 83 points, you know, 81 is, you know, rank for green. I have eight points to go before I actually um, can go to the next rank, which is purple. And um, so um, that's a great accomplishment. Those who are at purple are usually very good scouts who have a very good track record. Green are very good too. And guys, just so you know, I was a purple scout for a long time. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean if the, if the scout's green, that they're green, because that's not the truth. OK, so they also have the vetter, which is a purple. You know, I'm a purple vetter. That means that I have a success rate of actually looking at projects and picking out those things that may not make sense things in the tokenomics that may not make sense to me um, or some red flags that, you know, I'm going to alert you of because you're a new investor and I want to make sure that you're careful on some of the things that I've actually, you know, you know, saw myself. Here basically tells you if you're going to scout projects, okay, and you're at a purple scout, and you post a purple scout, if you're a purple scout and you post one today, meaning a scout post, you're going to get paid $22.50. Not too bad, right? If you're green, you're going to get paid $17.50 and so on. So a good thing to look at, right? What's a hot list? The hot list is basically the projects that are coming up where you had purple scouts who have a really good track record who've done some, you know, really good picking things out in the past. And these are just some of those that if you want to, and you don't have time and you want to go, just go look at them. You ask, you absolutely can. So in here, this is the whole month of March. This gives you the colors of, I mean, just look at today, for instance, today's Tuesday. There's everything on the calendar today is purple with two, with two greens. Guys, this is, incredible. Okay. This is incredible to look at. And I'm going to share with you um, a couple of projects that I looked at today. One particular um, that, um, uh, you know, that was in that on the calendar that actually launched and did pretty well. I think 4X out of the gate. I don't know where it is right now, but I do have the chart up so we can look. So these are, again, you know, red, you kind of want to maybe stay away from for a little while. That means that maybe they posted a couple not so great projects. Doesn't mean that they're bad. It means that they just had a bad day. You know, I can tell you, I've had them. And we, you know, there's no, this is the crypto space, guys. This is not, you know, there's no magic wand here. There's no crystal ball. Um, we do make mistakes and we basically go by, you know, specific things that we know. But again, sometimes it just doesn't work out that way, right? The beige ones are people that are working their way up to green. You know, basically the yellow ones are brand new and the gray means that they have, they posted these two things, these two posts got posted, but they weren't gonna put their name on it because they're not quite sure what it will do. So they don't wanna put their name on it and, re and risk their reputation, okay? I wanna share with you this, this is the video library. And this is going to be populated and it's going to keep on getting populated over time 
be just so that you know you can actually click the arrow that's right here and you can advance this this is going to be more like it's almost going to be like netflix where you can pick out some things that you actually you know want to look at there are some training here there's going to be some additional training as we go forward so don't be nervous if you don't see something exactly what you're looking for. One of my favorites right here is how to vote properly. That might be something. This is another great one. You know, if you're going to, how do you actually upload a project as a scout in the calendar? That's important, you know, so you might want to go ahead and take a look at some of these and, you know, understand, you know, how you can actually benefit from them. So I'm going to go back to the screen. Let's get into the team's stats. Well, this is a great thing to look at, guys, because this can give you an understanding about like who the top people are right now. Who are the top tipped scouts? Well, that's good to know, right? Because the top tipped scouts, you might want to take a look at them and say, what the heck are they posting? You can go there and take a look at what they're posting and understand what they're posting and maybe take a look at some of those things and decide whether or not you feel it's right for you. Who are the top tip vetters? Well, take a look at them and go look at some projects that actually they vet it. And if the vetting is good, you know, and you feel what you saw was also in your favor. You know, again, this isn't financial advice, but you might want to go ahead and take a look at that too. Okay. The top paid scouts. Okay. Now, guys, again, these are people that you want to keep your eyes on, right? Because they're, they're, they're top paid people who've done exceptionally well. Again, top, top paid vetters. And then we have also the top paid voters too, who also um, are also recognized, you know, in our platform. So let's go back and let's get into this section here. I love this section because it talks about the gains and tips. And this is another way where you can start to differentiate people that you might want to follow. Okay, eventually we will have a follow me button that you're going to be able to follow some people. Right now we have projects that you can follow. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. So taking a look at this, okay, this means that this row here, these are people that actually invest it in projects, okay? And, um, and this is how much they made in that project by, you know, 5x, 10x, 15x, 10x, Okay, guys, I don't know about you, but these people that are making like 10, 15 X's, I'd like to go know what their what their projects are, right? Take a look at them and start to kind of, you know, get your feet wet. And what's this? These are tips. These are tips that these people here, okay, these people who are, are users on the DAP have paid these scouts, in Vetter because they were like excited that, you know, hey, you know, thanks for, thanks for telling me about that because had you not posted it, I never would have been able to get into it. So it's a good thing. Do you have to tip people? Of course not, but it's a good way, you know, to kind of like do some, you know, good faith into some people who are actually helping you make some money. These here, this these are the tiers. These tiers um, are basically, it helps you get access to all of this DAP, okay? So tier zero pretty much gives you a limited access of the calendar. You'll be able to see it, but you're not gonna be able to see the insides of the calendar. I'm at a tier four, so what I'm gonna share with you is everything you can see at a tier four. Well, you'll say, how do I get to those tiers? It's simply by getting the vetter token go into the vetter.ai website, or you can actually get it from here too, I believe, and buy yourself the tokens, okay? And buy it to whatever level you choose that you want to be able to take part in, okay? Now, this level here is gonna, it's gonna show you what the ICOs are. Um, ICOs, I'll explain what they are in a little bit, but you have to have tokens typically you know, um, before you actually not only a vetter, but their tokens before you can get involved there. 
tier two, basically you can see the vetters and what, you know, so you can see some of the vetter stuff, people who are vetters out there, what they posted. Tier three, you can see the color rankings, whether they're purple, green, you know, yellow, you know, red, gray, beige. Um, and then tier four is basically an advanced option and it gives you a lot of different, um, you know, options. Um, which I'll get into in a minute. And again, these are the rankings, what I also described when I was up in here. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's jump into this calendar because it has got a ton of information um, that I believe has been, you know, extremely, exceptionally helpful, you know, for me, I can tell you that. And um, I've been away from it for a little bit and I'm I'm looking at it now and I'm saying, man, oh man, you know, I've gotten to a couple trades in the last few days and I'm um, doing pretty well. So I want to actually, you know, show you one. This one's called Ever Wealth. Okay. Now this was actually, um, this was scouted by a purple scout. It was also vetted by a purple vetter. Okay. This launched today. Okay, so um, I'm gonna show, show you basically, um, you know, I'm gonna show you this. This is the chart link. Okay, and this is a five minute chart right here. I'm gonna just actually get this to expand some to, uh, all right. This here is a five minute chart. So let's just move it to like maybe a 30 minutes. Okay, 30 minute chart. Okay, so I can tell you that the price on this, that when I got in on, okay, the price on that, and I'm just gonna map it out for you. The price on this when it launched was 0 0.00034, okay? So this is where I got in at, okay? So this is the first 30-minute candle. This is the second, so that's an hour. This is an hour and a half, okay? These are 30-minute candles. So that means that in the first, you know, um, is has it been successful so far? Can you can you put put your hand in the box or just put your name put something in the box that says, you know, this was the price if you got in here, okay, and it's up right right about here now. So do you think that the people that got in at that level, you know, were able to take it? There was at least one hour where they can take a profit. Remember, these are thirty minute candles, thirty minute one hour, an hour and a half. So right now, an hour and a half, two, two and a half, three hours, okay? So if you were in here, and Catherine, you're right, congratulations, um, you would be able to profit. So kudos to you. So what do you do here? You know, are you, you know, um, you know, you, you have your wallet attached, which I don't, okay? And, you know, you have to have a strategy when you get into this sale, right? You want to know where do I want to, how long do I want to stay in this? Okay. Well, you know, my strategy was, you know, I wanted to actually, you know, I put in two B and B and I wanted to actually like kind of just double my money. Okay. So let's just take a look and I haven't really done all that yet. Oh, hold on a second. Wrong one uh forecast so here's the forecast right so in that first 30 minutes it was at a 30x right 300 percent okay here in that first hour it was 21 percent right here whoops Let's see if we can move that up. And, and right here, it's it's still hovering about you know 17%. Okay. So 
I actually did take some of my money out. Okay. I made a profit and you need to have a strategy on what that is before you even enter a trade. Is your strategy that you want to go in and get your money back? Do you want to double your money? Of course you want your money back, right? So you might want to get your money back plus, you know, an extra 30, 40%, whatever it is, you know, basically, you know, whatever it is that your strategy is. And if you don't have a strategy, then, you know, we can help we could help teach that to you, you know, over time. And you can actually ask questions, you know, in our Telegram group. The strategy for me, the basic strategy for people that are brand new is get in, you know, um, you know, know what you what your price, what you paid, know how much, you know, how much you want to make on that. Do you want to double your money? Okay. Um, do you want to make an extra 20, 30% on that as well? Then know what that is. And then make sure that you sell your token in that time frame. A lot of times what happens, guys, we'll look at this and we'll be like, oh, I don't know. It's probably going to go up higher. Do I want to sell? Do I not want to sell? You know, here's the thing. I can tell you that's how you get hurt. Have a strategy going in. Make that decision. Don't get attached to it. And you'll be much better off for it. Does everybody agree about that? If you have, if you agree, let me see a raise of hands or let me see some in, some action in that message box telling me that you understand what I'm talking about, right? Great. Well, thanks for, great guys, Catherine and Josia and you're all, thanks, thanks guys. You are, you're already, you're brand new, right? But you're already making a lot of sense of what's going on here, right? I love it. So let's go ahead and let's just kind of back out of this for a minute. And let's go back to the chart. <clears throat> I'm sorry, go back to the, let's go back to here. And let me just get to our chart. I'm going to erase this. Okay. And the next question is going to be, and let me just make sure that I have this view open for you so you can see. Um, the next question is, is, um, you know, Phyllis, what made you want to get into this? Okay. Well, I'm going to share it with you. Okay. This is how I look at what I want to actually get into. Okay. First of all, this is a big clue to me the success rate of who these guys are, who they are, these people, okay? They have a great success record. Doesn't necessarily mean that you should just get in because of that, but, you know, you can take a look at their, their successes and you can also take a look at some other things that I'm going to share with you that'll help you make that decision, okay? So let's look at that real quick. Let's look at, first of all, let's look at what the scout said. The scout said that they had a video AMA and it was pinned in the post with the owner of the project. So what does that mean? That means that they had to ask me anything on camera that was videoed and the owner was, you were able to see the owner, he was doxxed, okay? That means that you, you were able to see them, okay? So that is, a really good sign. The Telegram group was very, very active, you know, when this scout was in there. Now he says the team claims that the private sale tokens are locked forever and people involved had to promise to help this project. Well, we need to actually, that's something we would have to look at the tokenomics for, right? That's what we went over a little bit ago about what, you know, what percentage of, of the private sale is locked and for how long, right? Isn't that something we learned today? So that's something that, you know, he's basically saying that, but we would verify that, right? So um, what you're gonna wanna do is um, the, you're gonna take a look at some other things. He has red flags here. He said, it's a minor red flag. The liquidity is only locked for 30 days, okay? Um, he said, I posted an update in the other note section labeled update one. The dev gave a good explanation to his concern. So we'll have to look at that explanation. Sometimes the, the explanation might be because 
um, where they're locking their liquidity is going to go through a transition within 30 days. They don't want to have their money locked up in there. I don't really know, but um, there's 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 probably good reason, you know, for that. Okay, now let's go down and look at what the vetter says. Okay, um, let's. He's gonna. The vetter has gonna is gonna add some things. Let's see, and you can tell what they are. Um, it says here, I asked what makes a token a different in this token different from all the other rewards tokens, and this was the response. You know, so this means that the the person, the, the vetter and the scout were actually in conversations with the core team, right? That's really important for me. I can tell you that. So you want to read through all of this. Okay. He's talking about, you know, well, for one, we don't have team wallets, team wallets or develop or developer wallets. Okay, hey, that's that's a key, that's a key thing. That's a it's a key point to know. But that means that the team doesn't have their own wallet, so they can't take, you know, whatever they want and just go sell it. But the developer can't do that either. He says they have one marketing wallet that will be used for marketing, period. And that will be with the rewards, not tokens. So he's giving you reasons behind, you know, why he doesn't have, you know, his the liquidity is not locked, basically, for the time frame that he talks about. Now, you know, um, these are frequently asked questions that are important. And these are things that I usually ask when I'm in the Telegram group. And you'll learn this over time as a vetter. Okay. Um, how big was the private sale? Now, we talked about that a little bit ago, right? In the tokenomics, um, the, to the, the private sale was 70 BNB. So those tokens are locked forever, 100% more tokens, 100% of the tokens are going to be locked for the community leaders and influencers, okay? Um, is there any vesting? No vesting pre-sale, but the private tokens are locked forever. How many wallets will be on the whitelist? Why is that important? Because if there's a whitelist, okay, and there's 200 spots on that whitelist, okay, and 200 spots on the second whitelist, that means 400 people are going to be able to get in before it launches publicly, okay, so that means that if you're not a whitelist holder, okay, your chances of getting in at the lowest, lowest possible rate, okay, is not as great as those private, the private investors are the best, right? Because they're getting it at the bare bones minimum, okay? But the pre-sale investor is also getting in usually a little spot above what the private sale. Um, so you're gonna say, well, why don't we just in, why don't we just do private sales then? Well, guys, that's a good question, but I'm gonna share with you a couple things about that, okay? Now, I'm going to continue on in here. I'm going to go to their Telegram group. So as an investor, okay, you can actually go right to the Telegram group based on what you were given. Um, so, and yes, I was able to buy at launch, Aaron. Um, thanks. Um, so, so what we're looking for here, now right now you're seeing a lot of hype stuff because they launched already. So, but what I, what you look at is you look at, or has there been, and I'm going to scroll all the way up guys, cause they launched this today. So you're going to see a lot of launch things and people being all excited and, you know, but some of the things I look at are real important is that I look at, are there real people in this telegram group? For instance, I'm looking at chat boxes from you, right? And I know you're real because I see your questions. I see that you're, you know, asking questions. Well, that's what we want to see here. You know, if we don't see and we just see a bunch of, you know, meme type things and gifs and all that, that means that it's probably a what we call a bot it. Um, you know, it's it's very bot it. So it it really it's very scary. Okay, so, but when I wanted to talk to you about a private sale, not all private sales are created equal, okay? 
um, it's really important that you know that. Yes, is that where you get the bottom line price? Yes, it is. Okay, but the bottom line is, can you trust every core team that's on the crypto space? I can tell you right now, being brand new, you're, you're even going to know the answer to this. The answer is absolutely not. Okay, if you're getting involved in a private sale, you must know the track record, you know, of the people that you're getting involved in. For instance, Vetter, VPAD is coming up, right? We have a great track record. The developers are amazing, okay? Um, we did a 33X in the first, like, I don't know, half hour, 20 minutes, and has con and have never dropped below the sale, the price, the, 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 the previous sale, the, pr the private sale price or pre-sale price. So that's amazing, you know? Um, so, and you know what, Wanda, you bring up a good point. In the Poo coin, there's a ton also of bad ever wealth contracts. So what do you do? That means that you only get the contract from this place. This is called the pin messages, okay? Now I'm getting close on time, okay? But what will happen is you will have, there'll be a link here to the actual private uh, pre-sale and you only want to get your link from the pin messages okay guys because pin messages nobody can actually put in any information there with the exception of the core team okay so make sure you, you know that so I know that I already looked at this, this project, guys. I know it was going to do well. Me personally, I'm not giving advice and I'm not saying that I'm a rock star. I am not, okay? I am just saying based on what I look for and questions that I ask while I'm in a chat box, okay? And there's a whole slew of them. And eventually I will get, to, I will get those questions and I'll go through them uh, with you guys too. Oops, I always do this. I go too far. Um, on what I am in the process of doing, right? I always do this, don't I? Yeah, I do. And um, so you basically want to make sure that um, you know you're doing you're doing your all your due diligence, but you can also do your due diligence by again, okay. Again, the most important thing is you have the ability to be able to, um, you know, get, you know, get yourself a great reading, okay, on the people that I just showed you that are purples and green scouts, right? And um, I'm just giving you a, that's not us, don't go there, guys. Sorry, this always happens. I get all excited when I'm actually talking about better and I start talking about all the things that we have coming up and I just get to the point where I'm like really just rocking it out and then I do something silly, but that's okay. That just goes to show you that you can still 2X, 5X, 10X, all your, you know, all your, you can, you can do all that, you know, and, and still make mistakes, you know, <laughs> on the calendar itself. So this is the calendar, guys. It's an amazing tool. Um, let's just take a real quick look. And I know that this is coming up. So I wanted to just, um, let me look here and see if, I already looked at the calendar myself. So I kind of picked out a couple things that I thought were, you know, good to look at. Um, and I can't go into all of them right now, but Bit Rivals happens to be one that I believe I like and I'm probably spelling it wrong. Uh, it could be spelling it wrong. Maybe it's a, a break in here. I know it's here guys. So maybe I just need to refresh because I kind of went in and out of my, uh, my, of my sites. The other thing, let me just I'll maybe bring up this one and see if that'll come up. Yep, this one here, this one actually 
I think is it launched or launching today, right? Or tomorrow, it's pre-sale today. So take a look at this. There's a lot of great information here, guys. I can tell you this. I'll be doing the call on Saturday. So, um, you know, kind of definitely chime in there. And tomorrow's call is going to be done by, you know, the rock star herself, Sarah. And she's going to be doing some things on, you know, about the taxes and gas and things like that. Some things that, um, again, that you may not be aware of, and she'll be able to actually share that with you. She's going to be doing things on what slippage means and things like that, and she'll be doing more on the DAP. So, guys, I need to call it a night. Uh, you have been amazing. Thank you so much for your support and for, you know, all, you know, <laughs> everything that you've done. Um, you know, I see here, oh. Let me look at this. It says the Zoom user, Better itself was my only pre-sale I've ever done. And I was buying blind after missing the eight second window. How do you see the chart when it's not listed yet? Well, if you're on KuCoin or Dex Tools, okay, you can actually see the chart. Okay. If you're on Pancake Swap, there are there is not a chart there. So if you're on PooCoin, okay, or Dex Tools, and you put the contract address in, you will be able to see the chart there as well. But I got to say something to you, though, on Zoom user, ZU, congratulations, because, man, if this was your first one on the Vetter platform, was your first pre-sale, you made a tremendous choice. So um, good, good for you. Kudos to you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night and a better tomorrow. And it's always my hope and prayer that you guys get this because this stuff can definitely help you, you know, um, grow in the financial in the financial world as well as growing in the crypto space. And again, this is not this is definitely not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. Um, I'm just giving you tips and tricks that I know. Have a great night, everyone, and a better tomorrow. And I will see you soon.